All right, this is Chris Anderson from 3D Robotics. Chris, uh, first of all, thanks for um, helping put together what is our, uh, our cover model on our uh, drones issue. Uh, I think it turned out beautifully. You've got a, a fantastic team that's uh, putting together some, some really interesting pieces. But uh, how's, uh, how's today been here at the, uh, the meetup? What's to, what's to argue with? We're out in the sun, drones are flying. It's, it's a beautiful day. Yeah. So um, Iris came out uh, just a little bit over a month ago. Actually, of, it's coming out on, on February 17th. Okay. So, um, so we had a developer release um, earlier, but the consumer one's coming out in less than a month. Okay. How excited are you about that? So excited. This is like, you know, we've been working on it for so long and, you know, tweaking and tweaking and tweaking to finally get it out there. I got to fly uh, a test flight of it, and I'm admittedly not a very good pilot, but um, our, at our meetup that we had a couple yeah. months back, and um, that thing flies really nicely. Well, the whole, thank you. The whole point of autonomy, of real autopilots, is that you don't have to be a good pilot. If you if you want to just sort of switch into loiter mode, and it just kind of you know, pops up, does one thing, now you can think about the camera rather than the vehicle, but if you really want to fly it, then you just switch to another mode, and off you go. So what happens, uh, this comes out, um, you guys got to start working on... Um, what, on what's next? Iris so, two uh, yeah. and uh, etc. We've, we've just done our, our kind of migration from our our 8-bit platform, which is based on our Arduino, to our 32-bit platform. So that's you know doing those kind of platform changes is um, it's a lot of work, but it opens up this huge amount of uh, overhead in terms of uh, or headroom rather in terms of the processing power. The question is now, what are we going to do with it? Right. Machine learning, artificial intelligence, image processing, you know, more and more advanced software functions that make these things easier and easier to use. So, and that's one of the things that we've really been looking at in this magazine, uh, this issue specifically, the, um, you know, what, what are the things that people have been doing to push the hobby in the next, the next steps? There's a certain point when you've flown enough times and you need to do something more. Absolutely. I, mean, I think we went from getting a robot to fly to doing something with it. Um, the, you know, the first part was getting to fly, and it was like soldering irons and compilers. Then it was like making it easier to fly, and I think that's where we are right now. Then they're carrying cameras, GoPros and beyond. And then the next question is, okay, how do I get epic video? You know, how do I have like the director's view without having to have a Steven Spielberg on hand? And that, and that our creative function, that our sort of, you know, forget the vehicle. Just what is the camera seeing? What would be the perfect panning angle? How do I sort of, you know, press a button and get something that's just going to be, you know, spectacular on YouTube? I think that's the next frontier for where we're going now. Do you think, what, what's the point where, uh, what happens where everyone says, I need one of those in my house? Or has that point already happened? Yeah, that point has not happened right now. I think, you know, anyone who's seen one says that looks cool, looks like fun, etc. Most people think it looks hard. Um, so we need to make it look easier, make it be easier. I mean, at the end of the day, you've got your camera and you just sort of, you, you, we, we've been stuck to the third, you know, to eye level for the entirety of human existence. Um, now we know we're not stuck. We can put a camera, we can put our eyes anywhere we want, but what's the easy way? I mean, if you were a director here, would you just sort of say, go, would you use your finger? Would you use your hand like this? Would you sort of, you know, maybe you'd use your phone and just do a pinch and zoom and, but you know, the point is, is that, is that you're putting cameras in the air is now something within reach of everybody. And now we can start to ask questions like, what are they seeing? You know, what, what would be the Hollywood, tr you know, shot here? And how do I get that and how does software help me? It's exciting stuff to think about. You know, the stuff that we've already hit uh, is, is, has blown my mind uh, in a lot of different ways. And uh, it's exciting to think of, you know, the, the, the next generation and what they start doing. And, you know, a meetup like today, I feel like there's uh, some of the people that are working on some of those things already actively. So it's what's really exciting about it for me. You know, I, I think the two things most exciting for me are, first, what people do creatively with it. And that's all making it easier to use, more autonomous, etc. And the second is this, this platform, this ability to hack it, to add features, things we've never thought of. That's equally exciting. And that's, you know, that's one thing we emphasize. We're an open platform. You know, anybody can change it, modify it, add features to it. And I have no idea what they're going to come up with. I'd like them to just blow me away with some spectacular feature that makes perfect sense, and they did it, not us. And the nice thing is when they do it and they give it back to the community, then everybody gets it. Absolutely. So legislation-wise, uh, give me your dreams, dream scenario. What happens in a couple years as everything starts getting written down and firmed up with signatures. Yeah, well today we're flying under the recreational exemptions, under 400 feet, visual line of sight, and that's fine. And, and, the, and the consumer consumers have led this you know, drone revolution to date, in part because of these regulatory exemptions. Um, there's a process to allow commercial use. So today we're not far from Napa Valley, the vineyards, etc. These things could be doing crop surveys as well. But the, you know, the legality of that in the United States is not yet well established. Um, that's been going slower. 
um, than, than people had hoped. Um, we're kind of agnostic on this for a couple of reasons. First of all, we're happy with the consumer-led industry. We're happy to kind of put things in the hands of regular people so that when the consumer use, the commercial use comes along, that the platforms are just that much more sophisticated and easier to use. Secondly, there's a big world out there. This is the United States, but you know, in fact, most drones are used outside of the United States and they don't have these same restrictions. So. Um, I, look, I'd like the regulations to happen sooner rather than later, but in the meantime, we can do so much in terms of advancing the technology that I'm not held back. Makes sense. All right, well, thanks, Chris. And uh, I'm watching you guys excitedly. Thanks for doing this. Yeah, keep up the good work.